Okay, in this video we're going to do another virtual proof of a promotional product. Uh, this time I have selected something different and I'm going to go to the website right now. I'm on the Fields website. I've got a large tote bag here. That tote bag for reference here is 20 inches wide and we're going to use that in making our virtual proof. We're going to actually take into consideration the size of the logo and the size of the bag this time so we can get everything in the correct proportion to be as accurate as possible in showing the customer what this is going to look like. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get a, a higher resolution of this graphic here by just clicking on the bag. Um, they bring up another screen here that shows us a bigger picture and um, it'll be a real nice representation when we get finished here. So I'm going to right click, just say copy image, go ahead and close that window and then I'm going to go into Corel Draw and I will paste it in there. I'm just right clicking, paste, and we've got the image into Corel Draw. Now just like last time, there's not much we can do to manipulate this image in Corel Draw. We have to do it in Corel Photo Paint. And so with the image selected, we click on Edit Bitmap. Take just a couple seconds and our Corel Photo Paint will open with that object in there. And we're going to do pretty much the same as we did last time. We're going to eliminate this image or the logo on the bag by using our clone tool. And our clone tool is over here under the red eye removal, under the flyout, and um, come down to the second item and it says clone tool. Kind of the same as we did before, the clone tool works by we right click where we want to select something from and then as we click and drag it paints what is in in our case the, the circle that has the plus sign in it it paints it over top of where our other circle is therefore we're covering up what was there now this bag's a little different than the last item we had was all one solid color this has a little bit of shading to it and it probably won't make a big difference but as you can see it's a little darker up here a little lighter down here um, just because of the the fabric is a little bit wavy so we can we can work with this just paint down over this and when I get down this far I'm gonna go ahead and start sampling from the bottom I'm gonna right click down here and so I'm actually painting a little bit different color than I was up above so we're gonna go back and forth across this and get some of that covered up now you can see we've got some repetitious marks here. The best way to get rid of those is to start sampling from another place. We'll do it over here and we'll just kind of paint right over top of those and maybe change our direction a little bit. That kind of got dark in there. I'll go ahead and undo that. But you can see our bag now. It's still kind of dark up here. comes down here a little bit lighter. Now if we want to clean up this texture a little bit, another little trick you can do is come over here to your paint tool click on your little arrow for your flyout and pick the effects tool. The effect tool then make sure you have the custom smear and you have a soft nib kind of shown here. The size doesn't matter. We'll adjust it here in a second but I like to use the soft one so it doesn't have a nice hard edge. So I'll pick that. Now I'm going to enlarge this tool by holding down the shift key, clicking the mouse button and pushing up on the mouse and I'm going to get it about that size. Now this custom smear, all this does, all we want to do is hold hold the mouse button down and then just move it just slightly and you'll see now I let up, click and move just a little bit. Click, move. And I'm not sure if you can see that in the video but you can see it just kind of smooths out the texture of that area so when we zoom back out here we just look like we have the natural ripples of the of the bag showing there. So that should be pretty good once we put our logo on there. So the next thing we want to do this time is you can see this image has a lot of extra white around the edges of it. We want to get rid of that. We're going to use the crop tool which is right here and we're just going to drag a rectangle around the box and we let up on it and then we can move these handles in so that we're getting just the bag and as little as white as possible around the edge and I'll I'll tell you why in just a second here once we get that done. Now this is cropped too low here as you can see so we'll drag this handle back up until we're seeing all of the handles of the bag. So once we get that in position just double click anywhere in the middle and you can see it cropped away all that outside white 
area. So now we've got our finished bag here ready to go to back to Corel Draw. So we'll click Save. That sends it back to Corel Draw. We're done with the Corel Photo Paint. We close that. And now we've got our bag back here. Now, if you rem remember from the customer or the supplier website, we have a width of 20 inches on this bag. And what I'm going to do is go back to Corel Draw. And now that we've got this cropped up, roughly, we do have a little extra width here because this bag's on an angle, but we're going to ignore that for right now. And we're going to say that we want that bag 20 inches wide by typing that value right up here in where, where the object size is. So we've got a 20 inch bag, which is exactly what it's full size, if you want to think of it that way. Now let's go back to the supplier website, and it says the maximum imprint for this bag is 11 and 3 fourths wide by 10 inches tall. So again, we'll, with that information in mind, we'll come back to Corel Draw. We're going to import our logo, which is an EPS file. We'll use the same one we did before. I've got a GE logo here, logo here that's EPS. And we'll just drop it in here. Now remember what, what our supplier said the maximum width was, was 11 and 3 quarters. So I can put that in, 11.75. And just go ahead and hit Enter. And now it said the maximum height is 10 inches. So we're under 10 inches, so we're good. Now we don't want to stretch it to 10. We never want to stretch a logo. But we know that when we ask them to print this at maximum size on the bag now, this is the proportion it would be. If we sent the customer a proof where it looked like this, and then when they produced the bag, they, the logo would be printed smaller because that's bigger than the maximum size, then the customer is going to be upset because they're expecting something different. So we're going to resize that back to what, what was the maximum size, 11 and 3 quarters. So it's back to there. And um, the logo needs to be white by the customer specification. So since it's an EPS file, we can easily go over here and click our on our color palette and make it whatever color we want and it is going to be white so we want to get it kind of centered on the bag now the natural bottom line of this logo um, across this lettering would need to follow this to be in the right um, orientation so rather than rotate it I'm going to click on that again until I get my arrows to allow me to skew it and I will skew it down until that bottom line follows pretty much is parallel to this line just like that and that will give us the illusion that the the logo is actually printed on the bag because of of the angle of the bag is sitting on our screen so now we know that this is kinda of what this is going to look like if, if we ask the supplier to print it full size and but we've got a 20 inch image here which is not going to fit on our page but since we now have the proportion correct it doesn't hurt anything to grab both of these objects, as you can see down here, we have two objects selected. One is the bag and one is the logo. And we just shrink this down to a size that will fit on our cell sheet here. Right here we've got a logo and we can resize it. The proportion between the logo and the bag will remain the same as long as we size them both at the same time by always selecting both. And that's important so the customer can see exactly what the proportion between the product size and the logo size will be. So from there, all we have to do is add all the important information such as your company information, your pricing and stuff like that. You've got a virtual proof of this bag that you can show your customer. Hopefully we've learned something from this video and uh, we're going to be doing another promotional video here shortly. So we'll see you in the next video.